very likely that this virus has come from bats. Bats have lots of viruses. Very few of these viruses actually make them sick. Bats are not a villain. Coronaviruses are a type of virus that can spread from animals to humans and cause diseases like SARS and MERS. The latest coronavirus outbreak started in Wuhan, China. So far, it's killed almost 1,400 people and infected more than 60,000 around the world. Scientists are racing to figure out how humans contracted the new virus. Based on initial genetic testing and past outbreaks, they say it's likely the coronavirus originated in bats. There was a recent paper put out where they looked at the sequence of a virus. They found that the closest relative to the Wuhan virus was a virus from a bat, 96% similar. I think that is pretty accepted, that the viruses are very likely coming from bats, but how they're getting to us from bats, either directly or through some intermediate host, needs to be worked out though, for this new one. There isn't one particular kind or species of bats that's associated with spillovers. For Nipah and Hendra, it's the big fruit bats. For SARS, and MERS, and this one, it's smaller insect-eating bats. Other animals have passed viruses between bats and humans before. SARS really spread from civet cats into humans, but now we know that the virus some point in time jumped from bats into civet cats. With MERS, what we think happened there is that a coronavirus jumped from bats into dromedary camels, and uh, recently we're seeing this virus jumping from dromedary camels into the human population. Now, Chinese scientists say pangolins could be the middlemen, but their research hasn't been made public yet. Pangolins are the most trafficked animal in the world. They're basically like an armadillo with plates. So they've got these really long scales, and those scales are prized in traditional Chinese medicine. I think the isolation of this virus from pangolins is going to cause a lot of stir because there is going to be kind of a knee-jerk reaction to say, you know, pangolins are probably it. The more that people look at some of the genetic data, you'll get a little bit of infighting in the scientific community as to really whether or not the pangolin virus is the true direct link or if it's just maybe another piece of the puzzle. I think we should be really cautious until we see the paper that comes out. Scientists don't need to know where the virus came from in order to develop a vaccine. But identifying the origin can help contain the current outbreak and prevent future ones. After the SARS outbreak, the government banned the sale of civet cats because we had now determined that civet cats could lead to more coronavirus exposures. So something similar could happen if, with 100% confidence, we can identify that it was this animal. Early reports linked the first coronavirus patients to a market in Wuhan where bats might have been sold as food. New testing has raised doubts about the market's role in the outbreak, but xenophobia toward eating bats has still festered. If you cook meat, you're going to destroy viruses like coronaviruses because they're not very heat stable. But either handling the animals or handling the meat or preparing the meat would, would certainly put you at rest. Chickens give us salmonella all the time. Do we stop eating chickens? No. Just stigmatizing a traditional practice or someone's food doesn't help the cause. It's wrong. You've got to understand the science and explain it to them. Scientists do know that bats and rodents carry a relatively high number of viruses. But bats often don't get sick from them. If we can figure out why bats don't get sick, we may be able to apply it to reducing the effects of viral infection. If we don't have clear-cut answers. We've got a lot of hypotheses. One is that bats are the only mammals that have evolved the ability to fly. Flying takes up an enormous output of energy. As a byproduct of all that metabolic activity, you generate toxic molecules. What bats have done is evolved to deal with that. Those properties, for whatever reason, allow them to deal with viruses as well. But all this is conjecture. We and other groups over the years have identified molecular mechanisms that bats have evolved that suppresses inflammation in bats. So bats have a good antiviral response that helps them control virus replication. And they have low levels of inflammation. Despite the animal's potential relationship to the new coronavirus, virologists don't want people to vilify bats, many of which are endangered. The reputation of bats is a, is a very high concern. 
Bats are so essential for our ecosystems. For example, the bats that I study, the flying foxes, are major pollinators. We love bats. We use bats as a model to understand the superior immune responses they have as mammals. We want to learn from them and hopefully identify therapeutic targets for humans. The more we kind of blend humans and animals, the more we're going to see all of these new viruses that humans have never seen. It's not like it's just bats. It's possible that a kangaroo virus might emerge some point in time in the future. If anything, humans are the problem because we are encroaching on their domains. <laughs>